All right, we are going to make the finger box today and I'm going to work. I'm going from memory. So you're going to want to use the, uh, the drawing as you go. But uh, first of all, we're in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and delete this guy right here. And what we want to do is we want to build a six by four by two and ends up being two and three quarter inch box. And we're going to want to build that in six different components or I will do components today, not groups. And uh, what we want to do is we want to work from the outside in. So let's go ahead and start with the front. We'll do a rectangle here. And you know what? There we go. It's kind of hard to start from the front actually because you have to get a pretty frontward looking uh, view. What I want to do is get that so it's on the green right there. And I'm just going to click, drag, click. Not worry too much about my dimensions at first until I make that first click. And I'm going to type 6, 4. And that establishes my first size. And then we'll zoom in right here and we'll do our extrude. We're going to push that inward 0.5 inches right there. Okay. And this one, we're actually going to establish our joinery. That is not correct. That is the size of the bottom. I knew I did something wrong there. You know what? It's easy enough. Let's just start over right here. Six by two and a half. I was thinking about the bottom. So one more time, rectangle. Click and get it kind of an upward view right there so I can get the green rectangle. Six comma 2.5. That looks like the correct proportion right there. And then we'll do our extrusion again. Click, drag, click, 0.5, enter. Now I'm not going to quite group this yet because we still have some joinery this time. Um, to do that, we're going to use the tape measure tool to put some guidelines on there. So T for tape measure. Click, drag, click. We'll go half an inch in each direction here. Click, drag, click. And we'll also want some lines coming down. So click, drag, click, 0.5. It was already there, good job. And if I look down there on the bottom in the corner, um, I can't point to it while I'm doing it, but if that says a half an inch, I can go ahead and leave it there. Same thing, I can go up there. It's snapping to a half an inch right there. So there's my guidelines for my for those finger joints. Now it's really easy to just draw a rectangle. I don't have to draw the side or the, I don't have to enter the sizes. All I have to do is click on a corner, snap to the opposite corner like so. And then we can use our extrude tool to make our joiner. So just click and drag to the back edge, click and drag to the back edge. I can snap it to that line right there. We'll come over here and here. So we use those guidelines to help us. I probably could have drawn with rectangles. There's a number of ways, but the guidelines go pretty easy. Um, and then once, once I'm done with these, I can click on view and right here, I could just tell it to delete the guides. We're finished with those and we'll hide that for a minute. Okay, right here, this is the most important thing in SketchUp. I cannot stress this enough. Before I build another thing in here, I need to group this. So we'll triple click it. Let's go ahead and call this one front and I'm using the G key for the component. Remember components and groups work a lot the same until you start making changes to them. Now I could copy this and move it back, but I don't really have a reference where to put that yet. So let's build the side. And here's where things are gonna get a little bit weird. We know how big the side is. We know it's four inches deep and it's going to be as tall as this. And I can do that right here. I can use this corner as a reference and I'm gonna kind of go down. See, it kind of wants to go flat right there. It's going on that blue plane. But if I just go here and down there, see, it's just not gonna wanna do it. So I'm just gonna kind of click right there. Looking down at my dimensions, I've got the big dimension going, so the up and down dimension goes first. We'll call that 2.5. And then the depth is gonna be second, so that'll be four. And if I do it backwards, I can always redo it. So that's correct. And we can kind of look at that and the proportions, right? And we're going to push this back a half an inch, or I could just snap it to this line right here because I know that's where my joinery is going to be. So I could either click, drag, click, type a half an inch, or I can just push it until it snaps on that line right there. All right, now watch what happens when I select this for grouping. I'm going to do my triple click again. It didn't select anything in this group, even though it's intersecting that, it's crossed over and all that. Once this is grouped, that's locked in. So I can take this one, I can group this, we'll call this side. And then now we can take and copy this to the other side. So we're going to use the move command with the control button. 
going to grab this corner and line it up on this corner. And once again, you can see it overlaps there. We're not gonna worry about that too much. Okay, also, this is a group. Since I started with a group and I copied a group, it's already a group. I do not need to go and make another group out of that. Okay, some people like to drag that over and then, okay, I've got a new thing. There's thing number three, let's make a group. No, don't make a group. It's already grouped. I can see it when I do that. All right, so now we're gonna take this component here and we'll do the same thing. We'll do a move. Control button makes the copy command. I'm gonna grab that corner right there and switch it to there. Okay, and again, I don't have to group that. So we've got our four sides right now. Um, what we can do is I'm gonna turn on my view command right here. I'm gonna tell it to hide the rest of the model when I edit these, because I wanna take a look at something. If I look at that front, I've got all my joinery. I have my finger joints right there. But if I look at my side, it's still just a solid hunk of wood. We have to fix that. To do that, I could go through and I could draw these squares in here again and extrude those out like we did on the front, or we go over here and we use the trim tool, the one that says trim. Okay, so we're gonna use tool and then target. So this is my tool. So that first one is gonna be a, like a cutting tool. And then I'm gonna cut this one and I'm gonna cut this one. And then we can take a look at it. So if I double click on that, it got the front side. And if I go over here, Got the front side, so we still have to do the back side. So one more time, we go to our trim tool. We're gonna use the back now as a tool, and we're gonna cut this and cut this. My space bar returns me back to my selection tool, and now that looks correct. That looks correct. That looks correct, and we saw that there. Now what's interesting, when I pull up that front, it shows me the component I'm editing and it's saying, hey, this shadow back here, that's that's a copy of this component. If I make any changes to the front, I'll make it to the back. What could happen on the side though? I don't have that copy over there. When we did that trim tool, it created a unique component. It said, well, this one gets trimmed, that, that one didn't. So they actually got done separately. So these two are no longer a paired component, but that's gonna be fine for us. Okay. Four sides done. We're, we're practically done with this thing. We're four six done. It's two thirds. At sixty seven percent, we're passing right now, basically, kind of, sorta. So now let's make the top. Now this we're gonna. I'm gonna. Well, I'll show you an easy way to do this. So we'll do a rectangle, corner to corner. That part's pretty easy, and then we'll extrude it up. And it kind of looks like it's ignoring this, but when we do the extrusion, watch what happens. We'll push it, click, drag, click. 0.5 gets me where I need to be. Except when we look at our drawing, half of this top is down inside the box. Because if I just put it like this, it'll just slide all over the place. So let's go ahead and move this group at first, sorry. Do all of that, hit group. We're gonna call this the top. And then we wanna move it down, grab a corner, slide it down the axis, and it's sometimes hard to get the direction you want, but if you just slide it like way the heck down here, I mean, I can go like a mile down here. So it's on that blue axis. And then we're gonna type 0.25 to move it one quarter of an inch down. And we can see now that it's overlapping into that box. So one more time, we're gonna use that trim tool and we're gonna use this tool on this target. We'll hit escape, same thing. We're gonna use this side as a tool and that's my target, spin around to the back, hit escape, takes me to number one tool, target, spin around here. One more time, I hit the escape key on the keyboard. That's my tool, that's my target. And now I hit space bar, and let's see if it worked. If I double click on this, there's my top, and as we pan up, look at that, we've got the joinery that we created in there. So what it did is use that box to just cut away all the space that's doubled up. All right, five pieces done. The hard part's the bottom, right? Because that's going to be kind of hidden inside there. So let's uh, let's see here. How do I want to attack this one? I know that there's going to be part of the bottom that's exactly the size of this. So let's start there. We'll do a rectangle, corner to corner. And we're going to push that down. Click, drag, click, 0.25. We're going to drag that down a quarter of an inch. And then I kind of need to see the top of this right now. I've got all this in the way. So here's something we can do. We can triple click this 
and we'll make it a group. We'll call this bottom. And then if I double click this now, it makes everything else go away. So I kind of, I prematurely grouped it, but that's okay. Cause as long as we double click in there, we can still edit it. And I want to take this and we're going to offset. Let's see if it'll let me do it this way. It will. So I'm going to click this edge and I'm going to go out from that edge 0.25. And then I'm going to extrude up 0.25. And I also have to grab this edge here. I have to extrude that up and I can just match it to the face right there. And that gives me the shape that I want. And if I don't want to be really particular about it, I could go through and I can delete these extra lines. My original plan was to do the opposite. My original plan was to make the bigger rectangle extrude down, use the offset tool to go in one quarter, but this will work just fine. Okay, so now we've got that. It's already grouped. Remember we did the grouping before we did the second extrusion. All I have to do now is click once to get out of it. And I can verify that it's a group by clicking on that right there. So now all we need to do is we need to move that up one quarter of an inch. So I grab my uh, component there, hit the M key, click any point in there and just drag it way the heck up. And the reason I go way the heck up is then I can verify, right? That I can tell it's at an angle, but if I go like that, see how it snaps into place on the blue axis? Obviously that's not where I want it, but if I type 0.25, there it is right even on the bottom where I want it to be. All right, now only one problem here. If I look at that side piece, there's a piece of the bottom that protrudes into there. So we still need to do the, um, we have to do the trim tool. If you could see me right now, you'd see my bird clamoring to get up onto my arm right now, which is what some of those pauses are. It's me kicking the bird back onto his perch. So you have to picture that in your mind. All right. Take that trim tool one more time. Now we've got a problem here. This says not a solid. And I think this has happened to us before. All right, so let's use the space bar. Something happened in there and SketchUp said, hey, I don't know what's going on. So we have down here, we have our solid inspector. So if I'm using the trim tool, not a solid, yes, I got that. So right there, when I hover over that, it says it's not a solid. I can't use this tool on a non-solid thing. So I'll go space bar, select down here to my solid inspector and it says I've got some stray edges. So we're just going to fix those errors. Good news. Your model is a solid. Woohoo. All right. Now we go back to our trim tool and now I get that number one. So this is my tool. And this time I don't have to hit escape because I'm using one tool to cut everything around. It's the opposite of what we did on top. On the top, the, uh, the top piece was the target. This time, the bottom piece is the tool. And I can just go click, 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 click. Don't believe me that it's happening? Hit the space bar. And now if I double click on this piece and pan around there, right there is that dado cut. Same thing on that piece. There it is right there on this back piece, right there. And on this side piece right here, there are those dado cuts. So there's your box. Also notice that my box is on the horizon. Sometimes we build down below, so we wanna make sure it gets up there, right? And we can take a peek inside, let's hide this. There's the inside of our box and there's no visible joinery in there, which is just what we want. So there we go, we are done. Let's go ahead and unhide everything before we turn it in. And then, you know, at this point, if you want to decorate it, you could do some designs in the front, but what I need to see are these finger joints here, the top and the bottom cut in just like I showed, and those outside dimensions have to be correct. Right, so before you go, just go over here, go to the download. That's gonna download an SKP file. 2020 is the one we want. Ooh, they have updated it, cool. And then this is the file right here that you are going to submit with your assignment. All right, there you go, a simple finger box. He says, simple, as you guys are freaking out. I know you guys are freaking out. That's why I'm putting on a video because you can rewind this and replay it as many times as you want. So there you go. Good luck. As always, email me if you have questions.